If you've ever had to go on the job hunt, you'll know that creating a resume is one of the most tedious, time-consuming, and annoying things that you have to do. In this video, I wanna talk about a really cool resume creation tool that I recently found out about called Beam Jobs. I'm gonna walk through some of Beam Jobs features and highlights, and I'm also gonna create a resume to show you how to use it. Full disclosure, Beam Jobs is sponsoring this video, but I only took this sponsorship after checking out their product and realizing how good it was. Beam Jobs is one of the top resume builders in the United States, and it's been around since 2020. Since that time, it's helped users create over 2 million resumes. Some of those users are candidates who were able to land jobs at top tech companies like Google, Meta, and Stripe, to name a few. They pride themselves in having great user experience, top customer support, and having some of the best user reviews. They make the process of creating a resume extremely easy by either letting you upload an existing resume or creating one from scratch. They also use AI to help guide you through the process of creating your resume. Their goal is to help anyone in any stage of their career land their dream job. Let's go ahead and actually check out their website, check out what they have to offer, and create a resume. Their pricing is really affordable. As you can see, they offer a 14-day full access trial for only $2.99. After the 14-day trial, it's $29.99 build every four weeks. If you also like, they offer monthly access where you're billed yearly and you save a lot more by only paying $6.99 a month. They offer unlimited resumes and downloads. They have AI powered resume score, custom AI powered resume recommendations based on millions of successful job applications, auto magically generated cover letters, create a cover letter customized to your resume and the job you want with the click of a button. And they have a 14 day money back guarantee. Email them with issues anytime in the first 14 days and get a full refund. Beamjobs.com uses Trustpilot to handle their reviews. And you can see that they have a almost perfect five-star rating out of almost 500 reviews. So that's saying a lot. Creating an account with Beamjobs is super easy. You can authenticate with Google or you can create an email and password if you'd like. So here you can see they say that you can create a modern professional resume in just 12 minutes, which is pretty quick. They give you the option to create the resume right away. Some of the companies that they call out that people have been able to land jobs by using their resume, like I mentioned earlier, Google, Stripe, Lyft, Facebook, Chegg. You can jump right into creating a resume here by using their little widget to create a quick resume. I'm gonna finish walking through their website real quick to talk about some of the things that they have here, but then we're gonna go and actually create a resume in just a sec. You can see they have a good amount of resume templates that you can choose from here that have all been updated in 2024. And then they actually allow you to create a custom resume template for free using some of these pre-built layouts and colors here. A really cool thing that I like about their resume templates is that you can select resume templates by experience level and they even have resume templates by role. So you can see that they have some management resume templates here. You can see they have senior level resume templates here and then they have like mid-career resume templates entry level resume templates. When I was checking out the web developer resume template, if you choose the entry level resume template, they have a good section for your projects because many people who are just getting started and making a career change, often they don't have a lot of experience that they can list. So they make sure that they have sections for your projects that you can call out in the resume. See, they have software engineer templates, marketing templates, human resource templates, accountant resume templates, nursing templates, and many more. They also provide over a thousand resume samples that you can use if you need a little bit of inspiration or are having a hard time figuring out what to put on your resume or how to structure it. They have all these examples that you can check out so that it can help you create your resume. And then you can see here, they have all the different types of jobs that they have resume examples for. We'll go to the IT section because that's what we're going to talk about here. And they have like every IT job available. They had the web developer template that I was checking out earlier. And one of the things that I, I noticed that I was just mentioning was that if you take a look at their entry level web developer template that they have here, a good spot here where you can call out all of the tech that you know. They also have a work experience section here and they have a nice big chunky project section where you can list out the projects that you've worked on. When I started out, I remember my resume, I had to fluff it quite a bit and add my projects to it because I didn't have work experience. So having a resume that's laid out like this is really good. They also have a skills section down here where you can list out all the programming languages that you know. So then when companies are using tools to scan through their resumes, you have your skills listed out here nicely and you can pass some of those uh, initial screenings with the resume scanning tools that a lot of companies use nowadays. So there's some of the templates, there's some of the examples. Let's go in and create a resume right now. In the past, I've used a resume that looks a lot like this one here. I tend to like that style because it it's just a resume that I prefer. I think it's a little easier to scan, but I know that all of these resumes are optimized and set up in a way that are easily readable. Having also interviewed a lot of people 
and seen a lot of resumes in my day, I can tell you that these templates look really nice. And I've seen some pretty bad resumes that don't use nice templates and don't lay out their information in an easy to read way. And these all look really good. There's so many options. I'm having a hard time selecting one that I like. Since I usually go with the professional layout that looks like this, uh, I'm thinking I might just stick with that one and we're gonna go ahead and create it. So here you can see when you go to create a resume, they allow you to either choose an industry example, they allow you to upload an existing resume. You can also import your LinkedIn profile or you can start with a blank document. Since I don't really know where my existing resume is and I keep my LinkedIn profile up to date, I am going to just import my LinkedIn profile because I think the only job that I don't actually have all the bullet points listed for is my current role, which I just left. And I'm kind of glad that this came at a perfect time because even though I'm not actively looking for a job, I always like to keep my resume updated and I'm gonna use this tool right now to do that. Let's go ahead and import our LinkedIn profile. So they have some steps here to guide you through that process. You just go to LinkedIn, you click the more button and then you save the PDF and then you can drag and drop the PDF here. So let's go do that real quick. All right, so we're on my LinkedIn. We'll go to my profile here, click the more button, save the PDF here. Now we have my LinkedIn profile here. It's saved. We'll go back to Beam Jobs and we will drag and drop our resume right here right now. All right, give it a second to upload and there you have it. So since it imported from LinkedIn, it took everything from my LinkedIn profile. You can see this is my about section here and it took that and put it in right up here. I can see that it trimmed some of that as well to make it fit, to not take up too much room. So that's cool. It, it still lets me edit all of this stuff here. So that's pretty good. You can also rearrange your sections up here. You can add a section if you like. It says that my resume needs work. So what, what are some of the improvements? So it says here that your work experience bullet points should contain metrics. That's something that I always tell people when they're creating a resume. You absolutely need to highlight metrics. You don't necessarily want your resume to just read like a job description. You want to talk about the things that you were able to do at your job and the, the problems that you solved and how that impacted your team and how it helped business, how it drove revenue or how it improved current systems or how you built new systems with the skills that you used at your job. So make sure that it contains metrics. I think that's a great call out. Your resume includes unnecessary filler adverbs. Use an active voice. That's another really good point there. Avoid personal pronouns. Your resume includes unnecessary personal pronouns. Start with strong action words. Some of your bullet points don't start with strong action words. So it says that my resume is too long. It created a very long resume. That's because I imported from LinkedIn. And I think for the sake of trying to give you all the information that LinkedIn exports for you from your profile, it kind of takes it and puts it all in there. I can see that there's a lot of extra stuff here that I wouldn't put because I have some of the job history from like my restaurants that I worked and places that I worked in Las Vegas and stuff that is just not relevant to my job now as a software developer and as a front end developer. So I would probably cut a lot of that stuff out. It says that my work experience timeline is pretty good. My resume sections are missing key sections. I should remove some of the bullet points I have here and some of the bullet point lengths are pretty long as well. And it says that I have consistent punctuation in the bullet points. So now that we kind of just have my whole LinkedIn profile dumped in here, let's go ahead and, and clean up some of the stuff I know for sure that I don't want in there. I'm not gonna add all the skills that I have here, but in this section, I can see that these are the skills that they just take from LinkedIn. When you put some skills in there, I think you're only allowed to like use five on LinkedIn if I'm not mistaken, but you could clean this section up. You could probably also like list them out in single bullet points. Like I have in other resumes of mine, I try to put like everything that's a programming language in one spot. I try to put methodologies in another spot. I try to use like tools that I've used in another bullet and then I can probably just comma separate them to get like a good amount of skills listed there because you want your resume to always have all the buzzwords and tech and stuff that you'll be using at a job that resume scanners are going to be using to like look through your resume. So, so let's just start with education. Unfortunately, I don't have education. I don't put it on my resume. I'm a high school dropout. I need to let my work experience speak for itself and I'm not going to list my education because I would just put that I have a GED there and many of the times I haven't had a problem 
problem with not listing it. If I get asked, I'm honest about it, but I'm not going to volunteer my GED in that section because I don't feel like it adds value to my resume. So I'll remove my education section. I have a personal project that I'm working on. I, ha I don't have a lot to mention, but I feel that I have enough professional experience that I don't need to really call them out in my resume anymore because all of my professional experience kind of speaks for itself of what I'm capable of doing. So I don't really need the project section. Again, the project section is a great spot if you're just getting started and want to put some filler stuff in there and talk about the stuff that you've built personally and things that you've worked on. The project section is good, but I'm not going to put that for myself. In my previous jobs where I, I worked valet parking and other stuff in Vegas that doesn't make any sense to have here. So I'm going to just delete these roles because they are irrelevant to my current career. So here's uh, my first web developer, you know, volunteer role that I had. And this was some good experience for me at the time, but it's unnecessary for me to have that on my resume at this point. I'll leave this resume as a professional resume and not a freelance resume. So I'm going to remove the freelance work that I had there. Okay. So it has my information up here. You know, I, I'm going to just remove the UI UX designer part because I don't, I don't want to do that job anymore. This took my LinkedIn Gmail account, but I can just put my, my professional email. I'm not a big fan of how that's wrapping there. I think I'm, what I'm going to do is let's see if I can fix the wrap. All right. So that wrap is actually just happening there. Oh, it gives me an option to show and hide fields. So I can choose to show my phone number, my location and things like that. And I can also show different social media profiles, which is kind of cool. And then I can actually add a link to my custom website. So I think I'm going to add a link to my custom website there and I'm going to remove my LinkedIn. I, th I think that's probably more valuable there. Put my, my custom website there that I use for work. And that's my first and last name. And I think I like that a little bit better. So then now I got my email, my GitHub, and then my, my personal portfolio website there. You know, I have actually worked a lot to make this really good. This has already been kind of fine-tuned for the stuff that I've done. And then you can see here, it has all my other bullet points. I'll probably remove a few of them. The United States one there, I think that, was, uh, that wasn't very necessary. I never filled out my bullet points for my current job because I was working there and didn't feel the need to update my LinkedIn or my profile for that. So I see here that they have uh, UI UX designer suggestions. So I'm gonna go ahead and see what they suggest for that. So here you can see that it kind of generates uh, some suggestions on what you can add for different roles. So I'm gonna look at some of the auto-generated stuff that I have here that I can use. So it kind of just gives you some broad examples of stuff that you can put on there. I think that you can use these to get some inspiration and then fine tune them to your stuff. So this is something that I actually did at this job, which was create user personas. Uh, I didn't use that exact tool that they mentioned there, but I am gonna add that and then you know I can clean that up for what exactly I was doing. And then let's look at some of the other bullet points that they have here. So this is something else that is pretty in line with something that I did at the current role, which was I led product design and in that project. And I also helped uh, do a lot of design thinking sessions. And I think that I can tailor that one to what I currently have done as a UX designer. So this is a good one because I did something similar, but I was using Figma and I did create a style guide and I did a lot of the design on the application. So I think that I can kind of use this as a guide. And then let's see, I'll take one more because I think that's enough uh, bullet points. So I had a little bit of a hard time figuring out where it added that, but I realized what it was, was that the other jobs were showing my responsibilities and I needed to toggle that in the settings here. I think I think it did that because I had no responsibilities listed for this job on LinkedIn. So I guess Beam Jobs was smart enough to actually hide that because there weren't any. So I just had to toggle that on. And the examples that I selected from the list that they gave me are laid out here nicely. And now I can edit and tailor these to my exact experience using them as a guide for what I can call out. I'm not going to do that again for the sake of this video, but it's just to show you how you could use this tool. I, I'm really happy with the experience of using this tool. It seems like this WYSIWYG drag and drop tool that they have here is pretty intuitive. It works pretty well. They've got a lot of features and and things that you can do within here. And that's pretty awesome. And then right when you're done, you can easily just go ahead and like click download. And then you have a PDF of your resume and it's ready to go. That's, that's really awesome. This tool is really good. I really like it.
I can see why so many people are happy with it. One last thing I wanna show is the generate cover letter tool. And I'm just gonna try that real quick to see what it does. So I'm gonna choose the resume that I just created, which is too long. I would never have a resume that long, but again, for the sake of this video, I wasn't gonna go in there and fine tune it. And then uh, a job description. How about I just go on LinkedIn and look for some generic uh, front end developer job. How about here? at Amazon. Let's uh, copy that and then let's go back to here and paste in the job description and then I'm just gonna generate the cover letter and see how this turns out. All right, so here you go. Dear hiring manager, I'm writing to express my interest in the available position for a software development engineer at Amazon as a full stack developer with over five years of experience and that's taking that from my blurb. It's not taking it from my actual like timeline because I have more than that, but that's my fault because I didn't update that. The web-based applications and design, I believe my background skills fit perfectly with this during my tenure as a front-end developer and UX designer for those. Uh, I spearheaded product redesign. I'm proficient with JavaScript. You know, it. I think it, it actually did a really, really good job of calling out my work experience and how it applies to the job that I, I would be applying for here. And I, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with it. You know, cover letters are one of the biggest pains to do because that's where you really have to like fine tune it for the job. You should be fine tuning your resume for the specific job you're applying for, but the cover letter is even more fine tuned than the job. You don't wanna have like a super generic cover letter. So this tool really makes it a lot easier to just dump in the job description and, and take your current resume and just, you know, click a button and then have a cover letter. That's kind of nice. All right, so that's pretty much it. I do wanna say as my first time using this, I really, really like this tool. I thought it was a great user experience. It was super simple to use. I was able to get started on creating my resume immediately. There wasn't a lot of friction in order for me to do that. Being able to just take the PDF from LinkedIn and dump it in there and have it give me almost a complete resume was super nice. Like I showed, you also have other options. You can take an existing resume, you can use one of their templates, or you can start from scratch if that's your thing. As someone who's applied for a bunch of jobs in the past, as someone who's had to deal with updating their resume and fine tuning it and cleaning it up and dealing with all that stuff when you have to get a job, I can tell you that this tool is gonna be very nice and very convenient to have. Thanks again for Beam Jobs for sponsoring this video. I'm really happy that they gave me a year of the pro plan because I know if I need to update my resume now, it's gonna be a lot easier and less time consuming. All right, I hope this video was helpful. If you enjoyed it, make sure you hit that like button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.